Hi, it's Doug from Rise Above Performance Training. Today I'm going to do a video to supplement my article on overhead pressing and whether you're ready or not to do it. So common things that we see are tightness in the upper body and not being able to do a full overhead press properly or military press. So take the bar or a kettlebell and you'll see a press not able to get overhead, shrugging a lot with the shoulders or just one shoulder not moving as well as the other one. True overhead press or military press should be straight over the body, shoulders down, and then just right directly over the head and hips and bring it back down with any back arch. A lot of times just from our daily lives and jobs, we sit forward, everything's pulled forward, and that tightens up a lot of the lats and the front muscles here, so we have to roll those out to get them going. So I recommend rolling the lats. You can get a ball. This is kind of the beginner way to do it. You can put it against the wall. I'm going to try to do it against here without losing the ball. And I'm going to roll right, I call it the armpit muscle, but basically the lats attach into the arm. So it's right along the armpit and that triangular muscle. And I'm just going to roll in there and just go nice and easy. So the attachment of the lats connects in here. And if it's tight, it's going to pull the arm down. It's not going to allow it to fully straighten. So sometimes by releasing the lats and doing this for you know, a week or two will help you raise that arm a little bit higher. You can also do this on the ground. I won't demonstrate that, but it's going to be a little more aggressive because obviously you have your body weight going on there. So just be a little bit uh, careful when you do that. So after we roll and do some soft tissue work, I like to mobilize. Um, someone has a pretty tricky um, shoulder. Sometimes I have one person have shoulder injury, rotator cuff surgery, even laden surgery, and one arm doesn't act the same way. So you can use the stick for a little bit of leverage and you can just play around with the angles that your shoulder moves. So I'm going to lean over slightly. I have my hand on the stick here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of use my lower hand to guide my upper hand. And you can go in just general directions. Your goal is not to overstretch or turn the torso. So my torso is staying relatively neutral. My shoulder blade is staying down best I can. It'll glide up a little bit as I do it but I don't want to shrug it up here and move. And I'm just going to play around the angles. So I can go a little bit more forward, a little bit more overhead, I can go a little bit to the side, but we want to get that overhead, so I'm just bringing it up there. And of course you do both sides. Once you're done with that, um, you can take the band, and these are good for warm-ups. I do these on occasion to get my shoulders uh, warmed up. I'm going to do some military presses or jerks. And I'm just going to take the band. The band gives a little bit of slack, but what you want to do is we're going to do some flexion and extension without pulling the band apart and, and kind of faking flexibility. So I'm going to have my wrist straight, shoulders down, and I'm just going to flex my shoulders. Now, when I get to a certain point, I'm going to get to a point where I have to bend and lift my rib cage up and bend my back to get it overhead, but that's not a true overhead. I've got to be down here and having my shoulder blades down without arching my back. So I'm going to go to the point where I feel I start to lift. It's right around here. I start to feel myself lift. I feel a little tension in this arm. So I'm going to stop, back off a little bit, reset my shoulders, maybe go a little bit more. And I'm just going to try to open things up in those shoulders without bending backwards. You can also do small circular motion. So as I'm rolling around, again, I'm trying not to move my torso with it, keep my torso stable, and I'm just kind of rolling around. The shoulder moves in many directions, so we have to find the ones that kind of set things free. And the band is nice because you can kind of give it a little bit of a pull to compensate for tighter areas. So after we do that, I like to press on an angle. So we're going to go to the bar, the single bar, and I have a, it's like a, you know, you landmine or I have this kind of modular attachment here for a single press. And we're going to bring it in here. So this press is more of an angle press. So I'm not going straight up, but it's going to help my overhead pressing. And I can kind of display the principles I want to display by keeping my shoulder down. And then I'm squeezing from my lat and getting under the weight here. So I'm not arching my back. I'm not pressing and lifting my shoulder away. I'm keeping it square with the rest of my body, pulling it down, squeezing up, getting as much range of motion as I can without compensating, so I'm not, again, not twisting. I'm just getting as much 
range of motion and glide with that shoulder as I can. I can change the angle a little bit by getting closer, and then now I'm pressing a little more straight. And obviously, when I walk forward, you can see that I'm pressing a little bit more straight up and down. So I do like this one. And most people that can't get overhead are pretty comfortable pressing in that fashion. Next, I would probably grab a kettlebell and do a single press. So the kettlebell is nice because you make it a part of your body. You can do this with a dumbbell, but the offsetting weight on either side with a dumbbell will pull around a whole lot more. So the kettlebell, I can literally make it a part of my body. It's right in in this rack position, and I can press. So when I press, I'm going to use my lats again. I'm going to tighten up, pull my shoulder blades down in my back pockets, and I'm going to press up and get it right over my hip. What I don't want to do is press away, and now there's, it's not over structure. I'm leaning back to compensate for the weight, and it's also not over my hip. I want to get it over my hip, so now I'm not um, pretty much you know, not struggling to hold the weight up, and I'm not bending back, so I'm keeping it here. Lastly, when we press, we want to kind of keep things in. We don't want to externally rotate and press. Reason is I feel a lot of stress on my shoulder here. Also, the weight is not supported by structure. When I keep it in, it'll go out a little bit. I'll try to do it really slow, but I'm keeping it primarily over my hip so I'm supported and I'm not putting this uh, shoulder in a bad position. The kettlebell will also allow you to make these small minor compensations. One arm might not move the same as the other, and I'll do a double kettlebell press and maybe mine won't be doing that. When you go with the bar, the bar is fixed and you kind of are at the mercy of the bar. You're not going to be able to wiggle your shoulder and get it around a little bit. So I recommend a lot of double kettlebell pressing, which we'll do right now. So we'll clean these up, and then I'm going to tighten up by pulling down, tightening my glutes, and I'm going to press overhead. So you can see I should be just right over the top, not leaning back, not putting my head in a weird position. I should be straight over my body, um, not struggling to keep the weight up. Coming back down, Tightening up again, minimal flare out, over the top, and back down. So after you've done a few weeks of that, really working on keeping that posture, going light, um, and doing maybe higher reps to kind of get that range of motion, you can try the bar again, get under the bar, squeezing the lats, and displaying all those principles, and then see if you can perform a proper overhead press. So give those a shot, let me know what you think.